Hello everybody, this is Dream Gamer back to kick off round one for Group G. And we're not going to dilly dally, let's have a look at our fight card for this session. So, up first we have got Dino Tanker, tournament veteran at this point, going up against Lad. We have, well, one of the heaviest hitters in this tournament, Drogon Targaryen III, going up against Ultra Lord. A clash of two newcomers between Futuristic and Moon, and all that coming down to our main event of this evening. A crazy main event between the Pivar and Shiger. Now you'll see why that I picked that for the main event when that matchup happens. But first, we have got Dino Tanker going up against Lad. Right the ho in the right corner for Tanker. We have got a Simon Tyrannus and we are on the meadow field, which favors nobody because nobody has grass dinosaurs in this match. Um, yeah, interesting choices these two have. In the blue corner, representing the Mad Lad, we have got Eucentrosaurus, which seems to be a uh, favourite of theirs. I mean, look, let's be honest, last year Lad tried to use a pretty wild team and it didn't happen for them. But we have seen crazy teams do well in the past before, I think a couple of years ago. Adolf Adams used a weird, a wacky team and... You know, they did well. So I'm sure... I'm sure Lad will do better this year. It's tight. Oh, here comes the heat eruption. Good start from Tenga. This group, a very open group. I will say, I do feel Drogon is probably going to be the favourite to top this group. But as for all the other slots, they're up for grabs. So that's a good hit early on there from uh, Simon Tyrannus, getting that heat eruption. Oh, another tie. No heat eruption this time. You sent Resaurus yet to get going. Ooh, but it does get going. And Lad striking back with their first shot of the match. Defend, I think that's tech boost actually. Oh no, it's not, it is defense boost. <laughs> Getting the Thunder Driver triggered as well. And get in the Thunder Driver! Are you Centrosaurus driving, thundering the Simo Tyrannus into the ground? And I think that will be all she wrote for Simo Tyrannus, and it is! Well, it was a slow start from that, but they are in the lead. Right, coming in next for Dino Tanker, we have got Megalosaurus. This Megalosaurus, one of the hardest hidden secret dinosaurs. You don't want to get hit by that gigantic fall. Otherwise, your dinosaur's HP will take a gigantic fall. <laughs> and it is warning type as well. But it is Eucentrosaurus getting the next hit on the board. Okay, nope, there it is. <laughs> Tie bomb coming in as well. There goes Eucentrosaurus, I'm pretty sure. Oh no! It does survive! The defense boost. The resilience of Eucentrosaurus playing key there. Okay, but that tie will certainly end Eucentrosaurus. Right, coming in next for Lad second dino, we have got Polar Canvas. Another very wild choice here, Polacanthus. You don't see it that often. Well, you sent Resaurus, I think, did had a pretty good show in there. And it has given Lad a lead. Ooh, ooh, that's not good. That's definitely not good. That's a gigantic fall, and Polar Canvas is probably going to take a gigantic amount of damage. Oh, this isn't good. Well, Lad's lead has all of a sudden disappeared. And somehow he lands belly up, even though the rock landed on top of his back. <laughs> Riddle that one out, game. Megalosaurus getting another hit on the board as well. And well, that was quick, wasn't it? P 
polar canvas bite in the dust. And all of a sudden now, Tinker is, is in the driving seat. Right, coming in for Lad's food diner, we've got Cockerodontosaurus. It's got the fire cannon. It's got the lethal crit there. It is lethal type. But you do feel like Lad needs to get some hits quick. Because this Megalosaurus is looking very strong. Okay, that's a tie. He really doesn't want to tie. I doesn't want to get hit by that. Dino Tank, they're looking unstoppable at the minute. Can Megalosaurus secure the bonus point win? Well, it won't with this hit, but... It'll leave Kakarodontosaurus in a perilous position. Oh, wow. And it... <sighs> well, it was going well for Lad early on, but Tenker has really turned the screw here. Okay, there's a hit. A much-needed hit. Elemental power coming in there. Don't know if it's going to help at this point. Ooh, well, it won't be a bonus point win for Tenga. The Kakarodontosaur is not going down without a fight. Getting off the burning dash. Lad striking back. Elemental power maxed up as well, but again, I don't think that's going to help. Right, coming in for Tenga's third dino, we've got Super Triceratops. Awaken mode on three. Hmm. Actually, it might help. No, as long as the car gets hit by paper, then I think it can tank it. But any other moves, then I think it will be Tenka's victory. But remember, the elemental power is a, you know, it's a sh sword and a shield. That fire cannon will do damage if Lad can get it off. It's a tie. Oh, the tie. One more will do it. And that'll do it. You know, the car put up a little bit of a fight back, but that Megalosaurus really did damage to Lad's team. And it is Dino Tanker's victory. Three points on the board for Tanker. Right, on to our next matchup. Right then, in the red corner. Representing Drogon Targaryen the third, we've got Gygas. Uh, no armor this time, just the regular Gygas. Drogon will be what, definitely up there among what, among the favorites to win this whole tournament. But they'll need a good start here because in the blue corner for Ultra Lord, we have got an Alpha Aranus, no Alpha Iguanodon with terrain advantage. So that could be key for Ultra Lord here. Okay, so we'll get off a paper head. Well, we'll see. You know, last year, Drogon, probably a disappointing tournament, even though they got the last 32. A disappointing loss against Dino Hunter last year cost them. Uh, right, terrain advantage first. Get that over with. So I'm sure they'll be looking to bounce back with a strong tournament this year. And they do get the next hit on the board. And a flare sword as well. Good response from Drogon, that. That's a tie. Another tie. Oops, <laughs> tap the wrong thing. Ooh, Drogon gets the next hit on the board, and that will probably be all she wrote for Iguanodon. Especially with the Flare Sword coming in. Gonna scorch the Iguanodon there, and give Drogon a 1-0 lead. Now, this could be interesting, because coming in next for Ultra Lord, we have got the Majungasaurus. Super Majungasaurus, that is. Awaken Mode on 3. Hmm... Interesting turn of events here, because this Majungasaurus does have tight disadvantage. It's one of the more balanced wind dinosaurs, in terms of its, uh, crit. You feel like Drogon, a good opportunity here to build a lead. Well, a bigger one. 
And he's certainly taking advantage of it here. And you love another flare sword, crikey. This guy just is getting off some flare swords in this match. And they're definitely doing damage to Ultra Lord. That's once. Might not even get to the Awaken Mode at this rate. Well, that's a crit and move block, which is really interesting, but that might actually help Ultra Lord here. Oh, that won't. The poison, the move block. Oh, and another freaking flare sword. <laughs> and it's 2 0 the Drogon. Well, that was quick, wasn't it? Right. Coming in next for Ultra Lord, we got Deinonychus, and, well, it's going to have to pull his weight here because. Drogon is looking very, very strong in this map so far. But it can be done. So let's not count Ultra Lord out yet. Ooh, there's a crit. Much needed crit there. Oop, that's a tie. But Drogon won't mind that too much. Chip away at that Deinonychus' health. And he'll definitely take that. Another hit on the board. No Flare Sword this time. Oh, I think his Flare Swords have run out. And Gygus' HP has run out. Because that'll be all she wrote for it. A rec light recovery as well. Okay, not too bad for Ultra Lord there. Didn't take too much damage. Right, here's an interesting choice for Drogon coming in next. It is Eoraptor, the only Eoraptor in this tournament. And it will be a Sorrow Faganax. Hmm. Now, this is a big gamble, I feel, for Drogon using Eoraptor. I mean, Eoraptor always is a big gamble because it it's such a glass cannon. But it doesn't have much punch to it. We'll see how it pl we'll see how it goes. Because a big hit, you know, we all know how easy Eoraptor can get one shot. That's a tie. Doesn't have uh, heat eruption, unfortunately. So ties won't do much good yet. Nor will that. That's a hit from the Deinonychus Ultra Lord. Yeah, look at that. Not even a crit, and it does all that. Ultra Lord coming back into this contest. Ooh, until that happened. Light recovery to come. Drogon gain a big hit when he needed it. It's a burning dash. And it lags the emulator quite badly. Yeah, that was a lot of damage. Tech boots coming in here. Not like it needs more technique, but... Yeah, look at that. Freaking light recovery, gaining all that health back. Can Drogon close this out for the bonus point? The tie. Yeah, that'll do it. Eoraptor's gonna get it done for Drogon, and it is a bonus point win. And, well, that Gygus did most of the work, but kudos to Eoraptor, it did pull its weight. And it has given Drogon a bonus point win to start their tournament life. As for Ultra Lord, well, it was always going to be tough against Drogon. They'll have other opportunities, though. Right, on to match number three. Right then. Wow, we're in the meadow again? Okay, in the red corner, representing Futuristic, we have got a Super Baryonyx. Futuristic making a tournament debut here. Await the mode on three. Uh, we don't have any grass dinosaurs in this matchup, so terrain advantage is not a factor. Right, in the blue corner, representing Moon, we got Super Minus. Gonna have a Spinosaur clash early on here. Hmm. This is an interest. Well, it's always a tough one to call when it's two newcomers. I don't know who to go with you. Who, who do you think is gonna win this matchup? I feel like the Kark against the Ace Dino Tector, if it comes to that, could be key. Maybe having a Dino Tector gives Futuristic a slight edge. Well, I'll give him the edge, because that's a crit. Right, that's one. Ooh, Baryonyx getting off to the good start, yeah. The 
very good start. Look at this. It's a Futaba cannon and quick as a wink, Sukamimus is dispatched. Hmm, that was quick, wasn't it? Right, coming in for Moon's second I know we got Ankylosaurus. Moon hasn't, well, has not fired a shot in this match at all. And they're gonna need to fire one quick. Because the Baryonyx, it still has the Awaken mode to use as well. So a good opportunity here for a 2-0 lead for Futuristic. Right, here comes the Awaken mode, folks. Elimitor, future! Oh, that's a tie. Finally, freaking Moon lands some damage. But that's all the damage he's got to land, because that's a crit, and that's going to be lethal for Ankylosaurus, and a 2-0 lead. Okay, now Moon is in some big, big trouble here. But coming in third, we got Kakarodontosaurus. Um, with tight disadvantage as well. It's not good, is it? Are we going to see a 3-0 victory here? Like, at this point, I wouldn't be surprised, because I said Moon hasn't got a hit yet. But you, the random number generator is a very interesting missus. Oh, finally you give him a hit. The firebomb. Well, again, type advantage will limit the damage done to the Barry. Moon's going to have to dig deep here. Attack boost will definitely help, but he needs a lot more than that. He needs a miracle, really. Well, the Barry's going down. No 3-0 victory for Futuristic. But it is nice to see, Fut to see Moon finally putting up a fight. Right, coming in next for Futuristic, we got Super Cychania. With the wrong roar. <laughs> I think that was a game bug. Uh, Waker mode on three, like the uh, Baryonyx. We'll see how it plays out, because Moon is finally starting to put up a fight here. Can he keep it up, though? That's the thing. The attack boost is maxed up. So that's good news. That's a tie, but that'll only suit Futuristic that. Oh, as will that. That's a hit on the board. Boosh! Not much damage done, though. Defense boost coming in here, as is Earth Barrier. Tightening their grip on this match. Can Futuristic can secure the bonus point. That's another tie. The Kakarodontosaurus is losing health. Another tie. And yeah, there it is. That's that crit'll do it. Surely I think. Maybe. Yeah, definitely. And there's the bonus point win for Futuristic. Didn't even need the Dino Tactor. Wow, we're getting some one-sided matches so far in this session. Is that a sign of how this group will shape up? Well, let's find out. Because it is time for our main event. Right then, in the red corner, coming in for the Piva, we have got Storacosaurus. Okay, there is going to be terrain advantage in this match for the Piva with Majungasaurus, so I'll have to be ready for that. This is, this is going to be a fun match. In the blue corner, representing Shy Guy, we have got a Pachycephalosaurus Blitz type. So that means it will go for two crits in a row. Now, Blitz types effect do apply after any terrain advantages. So when the Majungasaurus comes in, Majungasaurus will quit. Actually, no, I don't think I'll matter in this match because the Majungasaurus is in second. Right, get ready to type that. Yes, yes, yes. Right. Ooh, that's a tight. 
Wait, try again. And that's another tie. <laughs> Interesting. Ooh, it's Storakosaurus getting the first hit on the board. That's a big hit as well. It's a Thunder Bazooka. Well, the Blitz effect deserting Shy Guy there, unfortunately for them. Ooh, but Pachycephalosaurus does get a hit on the board. It's a Power Drain. The cursed Power Drain, because it's with Pachycephalosaurus. Look at that gate. Who would think Pachycephalosaurus could do that? <laughs> He's going to shuck your soul. Oh, we got some secret moves going on. It's a laser ray. Big damage coming Storaco's way. And, oh, it didn't go down. Defense boost really being crucial there. And Storacosaurus gets a hit on the ball and a recovery. And the Pachycephalosaurus goes down. Oh, it's pants recovery. <laughs> right, coming in next for Shy Guy, we have got a Blitz type Sauronophus. So you know the drill. Well, you know the drill. Two crits coming up. Will Shy Guy have better luck this time? I mean, you're going for six crits in this match. The odds are you're going to get one, right, surely. Survey says yes, he does get the crit this time. And that should be all she wrote for Storacosaurus. Technique boost activate in there, that'll come in handy. This Sorophus does have green impulse. Now, with this Majungasaurus coming in, with terrain advantage, the Majungasaurus will get the next hit. And then, the Sorolophus will go for a crit. So just to clarify, Majungasaurus is going to get the next hit, which is going to be a biting wind. And then, Sorolophus is going to go for its second crit. And it's going to be a big crit because it's a biting wind. And that crit will put Peeva back in the lead. Right, now Sorolophus will go for its second crit. Ooh, didn't get it that time though. But did get the tie. Oh, Majungasaurus cleaning house, I think. Oh no, Sorolophus does survive, but needs to get the next hit on the board. And it doesn't! I mean, his bite and wind is a bit overkill, but it is going to take out Sorolophus and put Pivar 2-1 up. Right, coming in for Shy Guy's food and final dino, we've got the Blitz-type Edmon Edmontonia. Which will also be going for scissors. But given the Jungasaurus is pretty rock, that might not be the best idea. But Shy Guy really does need to get something going because the Majungasaurus has looked pretty strong. And there is that crap. Good response there from Shy Guy. Crit number two, maybe? And it is crit number two! Two crits in a row from the Edmontonia! And that has put Shy Guy right back in this contest! And the Giga Rock Hammer is gonna ensure the Jackasaurus goes down! Wow! Now that was a blitz! A crit blitz from Shy Guy has got him back in the contest! And we are both of our combatants are down to our fin their final dinos! With P Vars being Satiosaurus! Willpower type. Um, similar move set to Ultimate Dino Kings, but with some differences. They got Tragic Sphere instead of Futaba Cannon. I think they got Softening Beam as well. Very similar there. Right, so no more Blitz types, no more terrain advantages. Let's see how this main event will end. Ooh, Shy Guy getting another hit on the board. 
And net plus this, is it going to be Earth Barrier? No, it's Giga Rock Hammer again. Hmm. Piva looked pretty comfortable, but those two quick crits really shake, uh, really shaken them there, and I botched that going for <laughs> scissors there, but it doesn't matter because it was a tie. Ooh, Piva does get the next hit. The tile help increase the damage. Not by much though. Ooh, Edmond Tonya is back and forth, is Oh, is this another Giga Rock? No, it's Earth Barrier, but that will help. You know, they probably would have loved Giga Rock there, but Earth Barrier will do. Because that will mean that Pivar's going to need probably four hits to win now. Where a shy guy only needs one. And there it is. There's the tie. That'll do it for St. Eusaurus. And it is Shy Guy's victory. Now, the PVAR did... We'll get a losing bonus point because then Montonia's HP was below half. So they, they're not walking away empty-handed, but... Well, you kind of saw the pros and the cons of Blitz types in that match. <laughs> right, let's look at our table and we will end this session. Well, that is Group G, ladies and gentlemen. We've got Futuristic and Drogon topping it with bonus point wins in their matchup. Tenko and Shy Guy also getting off to winning starts. The PVAR did pick up a losing bonus point in the main event. And then we have Lad, Moon and Ultra Lord all pointless so far. And that will end this session. So, I hope you enjoyed and until next time, ata. ta